Hi friends, I I absolutely want you guys to meet uh, Pankaj. Pankaj, uh, I used to know Pankaj from my days at Infosys when he was a rock star there. Uh, Pankaj has got a fantastic resume and he's um, a resume that people could kill for. And he has started this new startup called Treadle. Treadle? Treadle. 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 Right. And Treadle sits at the junction of location and interest. So, Pankaj, without further ado, why don't you talk about your um, business? Rajiv, thanks for having me on. Uh, Treetal is, very simply put, a website that makes it easy for you to do all of the fun things that you want to do. So, for instance, if your hobby mm -hmm. is stargazing mm -hmm. or aircraft spotting or yoga, mm -hmm. laughter clubs, the thing is, for most people, it's difficult to find other people to do these things with. Mm -hmm. What Treetal does, as you rightly said, it's at the intersection of interest and location. Mm -hmm. We help you find people around you uh, who are just like you, have the same interests, and actually together plan and do the things that you actually want to do. Mm -hmm. So this is, we help you get online to figure out what you want to do, and then we help you get offline to actually do the things that you're really interested in doing. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, so how does a business work? You know, what's a model like? So there's a, a couple different things. So mm -hmm. first let me talk about our target market. So as we started thinking about this, it turns out that most everybody mm -hmm. has a need for something like this. Mm -hmm. But even so, if you further splice the market, uh, there are three main constituents. So the first one is regular users who have a hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, if they've had a life event. So if they moved a city, or if they are new parents, mm -hmm. or if they're newly married, etc., mm -hmm. or newly retired, mm -hmm. these people, they have now entered into a world where their um, choices are in flux, mm -hmm. so they can no longer do all of the things that they had wanted to do okay. before. Mm -hmm. So if you're new parents, you can't go out on every Friday and Saturday night checking out new restaurants absolutely. because you've got a baby to take care of. So what do you do? Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've all gone through, a lot absolutely. of us have gone through this. So getting onto Treadle will actually help you find you know, other people who are in a similar situation. Uh -huh. And then try and cultivate new hobbies, perhaps, or new interests. Very so, for nice. instance, you might really be good at indoor games, mm -hmm. right? Chess or um, other things like that, right? So, you really want to find other people who you can get together with in a safe environment, who are new parents as well, and then cultivate new hobbies or bring out the latent hobby, things you used to do when you were a little child. Very cool. The second thing is, um, as I... When I turned entrepreneur, you know, I met a lot of people, a lot of very experienced people, whether they're auditors or lawyers or uh, management gurus. Most of them, if not, want to give back to society, but they don't really have an avenue. You know, getting onto Treetal and actually creating your own little club saying, hey, I'm going to conduct these workshops mm -hmm. and I'm going to take in, you know, 10 people at a time mm -hmm. and talk to you about everything from... Um, work-life balance mm -hmm. to incorporating a company. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hungry people out there, mm -hmm. uh, young entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, who suddenly get thrown off this cliff mm -hmm. from their cushy management jobs, okay. who aren't really sure how to actually manage the time or all of the complexity that comes with being an entrepreneur. You know, getting some sort of help, mm -hmm. you know, in a platform like this is going to be very helpful. Excellent. You know, to do that. Excellent. The third thing, mm -hmm. the third one is actually not-for-profit organizations. A key motivation for starting Treto was to help not-for-profit organizations or NGOs actually find two of the most important things that they've been looking for. Mm -hmm. one, is, one is a funding source and the other one is volunteers. Very cool. So our platform, we've built a specific module for NGOs where you can much more meaningfully engage with the community and uh, at the same time receive support from them. Fantastic. And uh, receive volunteering help. Mm -hmm. So these are the three main communities we're targeting on Treetle, you know, today. And because it's almost exclusively user-generated content, our users are actually going to decide how they want to use Treetle. Very nice. So Very I'd invite nice. users, if you're creating something interesting on Treetle, to actually call us and let us know. Absolutely. You and guys we'll, we'll put it up on it. our blog, we'll put it up elsewhere, just to tell people how Treetle can be used. Fantastic. Fantastic. So obviously location based also means that you're going to be, you know, is it going to be, you've got to roll it out geography by geography, right? You can't sort of roll it out all at one time across the world kind of a thing. So, right? <clears throat> so yes, uh, there's some truth in that. 
So right now it's available in private beta in Bangalore and mm -hmm. the reason for that is we want it to be close to our initial set of users. Okay. Anytime you roll out the product first, uh, no matter how much you've tested it, there's always going to be changes you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some small bug fixes, UI tweaks, other things. So that's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. In the coming weeks, we'll actually launch it out across India, mm -hmm. you know, once the product is more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're hopeful that in Q4 of this year, mm -hmm. we'll be able to launch it in the US as well. So this is definitely a global play. Very cool. Uh, okay. But the business model, because of the currency issues, etc., uh, there's a little bit more of a challenge there. So we've got to just sort through that. But there is no... Uh, the, the, the model will work everywhere because, the because it's UGC anyway. So you <coughs> decide your location because you yes. are the user. I, I think that sounds fabulous, right? And so the next question really is, Pankaj. You know, you, you, you know, what is the what are the underlying trends that you see in the technology world or in the markets that you're seeing right now right. that makes this a billion dollar enterprise? I mean, obviously, you're not going to dream small in anything. I know that about you. Uh -huh. So what is it that's going to make it huge? So. Uh, some of them are actually fairly well known, such as the increasing use of the internet for people mm -hmm. to engage uh, with other people, including mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, one interesting trend that's actually been on the upswing in India is mobility, and I don't mean the smartphone kind. Mm -hmm. I mean the kind where people are literally moving from one city to another. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, it used to be that uh, mobility wasn't as easy, or people mm -hmm. didn't really move. Mm -hmm. uh, they stayed in the same city. Mm -hmm. If they went away, they went away for four years for college, and they came, and they came back, back to the city, uh -huh. and they worked there until they were Mm -hmm. But today, you know, if you go out anywhere in Bangalore, there's a pretty high probability you'll actually see people who are not, not, from, from, Bangalore. not from Bangalore. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you'll see people who've grown up in City A, they went to school in City B, and are now working in City C. Mm -hmm. So it's a life event for these people. Mm -hmm. Okay? There are people who are... India is also becoming... I mean, the world is in, becoming increasingly nuclear, as in the mm -hmm. families are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Families are moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So... All of these trends actually help Treetle a lot. Why? Because when people move, and when people are in a place where they don't necessarily know mm -hmm. other people, whether it's a new job or a new city, what have you, Treetle is a platform that can actually help you find mm -hmm. other people who are exactly like you, mm -hmm. get together with them, mm -hmm. and do the things you want to do. Otherwise, you probably would never have met these people, mm -hmm. unless through a forum such as you know such as Treetle, mm -hmm. there exist forums today, like email groups and niche websites that help you do this. Mm -hmm. But there isn't really a platform to the extent that we have built mm -hmm. where you can manage mm -hmm. all of your interests, you know, together. To that extent, it's really not like Ning or something like that, right? It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not like Ning uh, or any of the other social mm -hmm. websites that uh, you see out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, because our focus is really on the real world. Mm -hmm. We help people go out and do the things that they actually want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in some sense, it is social, but it's more activity-based than anything else. It's not really about, it's not about chatting, it's not about providing status updates. Um, it's, it's your passion for something that's actually going to pull you into the website more than anything else. Or, or, or yes, absolutely, or find a new thing to do. I mean, for instance, um, most people, I bet, don't realize how relaxing pottery can be. Mm -hmm. Pottery, I've tried it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most relaxing things you can do, just watching the potter's wheel actually go round and uh -huh. round, uh -huh. and actually the pot or whatever you're making taking shape. It is, it is cathartic in mm -hmm. some sense, mm -hmm. the experience mm -hmm. of doing it. But most people don't, even if I wanted to do pottery, right, I wouldn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, On Treetle, you can find other people Fantastic. who are interested in the same thing. And you can figure out what to do together. And you can figure out what to do together. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. It's so about bringing out latent talents in yourself as well. Fantastic. So, yeah. fantastic. the next question, Pankaj. Harvard MBA, McKinsey, Infosys, Cisco, 15 years abroad in the first world. You're back in India with a startup. So, what gives? What drives you? What motivates you? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. See, I grew up as the youngest uh, brother in a family of four brothers uh -huh. who have always done very well for themselves. So they set a very strong example and a very high bar for me. So it all started from there. Uh, I was also fortunate enough to have gone to good schools while growing up. I finished high school in Bangalore and then went abroad. Uh, was there for 18 years, you know, through education on the East Coast and all of my work on the West Coast. I uh, did a variety of different things and then finally decided to move back to uh, India and um, 
for anybody listening out there, um, the decision to move to India after having spent a number of years abroad uh, can't be based on analytics. It has to come from the gut. You've got to have a reason that's bigger than uh, the pollution on the streets or the traffic or you know the, the, my the other my, yeah my children or you know anything else. So it's really got to come from the gut uh -huh. that you want to just come back. And uh, in a lot of ways, you can't really rationalize it. Uh, but having said that, I will tell you that there are plenty of professional reasons to move back to India as well, as India has really unlocked its uh, potential. Um, the second question I get asked a lot is, why give up a nice, cushy job, you know, years of working in large corporations, and just jump into the entrepreneurship bandwagon at this point in your life? And again, I don't really have an answer for that, because this also has to come straight from the gut. No amount of analysis is going to point you to the direction of, this is the time to become an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Because uh, financially speaking, it's a huge financial burden. You've got kids, you've got mortgages, you know, school fees, everything. So you've really got to trust your gut and mm -hmm. say, look, if this is something that I've wanted to do, if, so if there is something that I want to create, um, let me not pull up an Excel spreadsheet or a document to list out the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. You've got to just feel it. Just make sure if you're married, though, that your spouse is 100% behind you. <laughs> I can tell you, even if there is a 5% doubt, at some point, that's it, going to become a 10%, 50% doubt, and it's not going to work. Serious so, messaging, guys. <laughs> so, so uh, my wife and I, we've been 100% together you know, on uh, all the decisions that we've actually Fantastic, made. fantastic. No, I think that's a very insightful uh, you know, point. That I'll you tell know, you one other thing, though. Yes. Uh, in the nine months that I've actually been an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I can categorically tell you that I have learned more in the nine months than I have in my entire uh, career doing sales, strategy, operations, investments, M&A, and all of these things. Wow. Because entrepreneurship teaches you things that you would never, ever learn. For instance, um, the buck just stops at you for everything. So you are the, you know, uh, when you become an entrepreneur, uh, you're the sales guy, you're the engineering guy, you're the product marketing guy, you're the HR guy, you're the CFO, and it's not just at a at a high level. So you really have to get down deep into all of these areas. Even if you have co-founders, you've got to share the responsibilities. And um, uh, HR issues. I mean, typically in a large corporation, if you have a uh, problem in a contract, you just talk to your lawyer. If you've got some sort of an HR issue, you've got a big HR team to back you up. Here, there isn't anybody. I don't have an HR department. My uh, accounting is outsourced. Uh, I don't have uh, you know CFOs or PR people or anything like that. So everything I have to do, and a lot of these things I've never done before. Um, but you've got to know, you've got to have the confidence that I can do it. And you will make mistakes. And the thing is to admit that, hey, it was a mistake, but let me correct it quickly. Um, you have also got to learn to develop a thick skin to the point where it actually becomes a hide. You know, it's no longer skin because no matter what background you come from, <laughs> Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you know there are there are there are, there are lots of things that are going against you. So we can make belts and purses out of your skin now. Eh? Absolutely. Maybe maybe if uh, things don't work out, you know. And there's a, there's a, there's a lot of me, right? So you can. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> so <high. laughs> Excellent point. So how are you funded? I mean, is it your own money at this point in time? Yeah. So or? a part of it is my own money. And uh, I was fortunate enough to actually very easily raise some angel money, friends mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're good to go for now. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we get into the scaling mode, uh, we are going to be going out and looking for an institutional round of uh, financing over the next several months. Fantastic. Fantastic. There's several months you're looking for. Yeah. Very nice. Very so sometime in the second half of year is when we, look, when we need to raise money. Brilliant. But we need to go out you know, soon because the process itself takes a while. Fantastic. And um, I think um, it sounds really exciting and I'm pretty sure you're going to make your billion dollar IPO in the near future. So best of luck and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Rajiv.